This episode of the Gold Blooded Podcast is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. M Y B O O K I E dot A G. Use promo code GOLDBLOOD, one word, to match up to 100% of your initial deposit. Everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're here. Oh, man. I don't know if this is an I told you so episode or what we say about it, but are you ready to admit that I was right on being critical of Reuben Foster from day one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was never an advocate for his character. You were an advocate of his. For his play on the field, yeah. You were... His number one fan in this room, by far. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for definitely. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, hey, I mean, it's good. Listen, you have no problem pushing your child. And clearly, <laughs> you once said you'd sign a rapist if he could help us get to the Super Bowl, <laughs> you know? So it doesn't surprise yeah, no me. No surprise. It, and I know that your backup team, like the team you silently root for, is the team from Washington. So it makes perfect <laughs> sense, you know. But of course, it's them that sign that picks up him on waivers, right? Yeah. Of course, the big like they have no problem insulting an entire race of people. Of you course, the, they're gonna, you know. You see the story today that somebody inside the police department in Tampa said that only one football team called for details. Yeah, and it was not the team from Washington. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Eagles. Yeah. And then they all the Washington also said how they have a bunch of. Alabama players on their squad, and they said they like asked them about it before they did it. And two Alabama players on Washington teams today said they didn't ask me. Yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, that's but insane. what's amazing about it is that they said it. Yeah, like that team's fucked. If like if I went somewhere and said I asked the guys on the podcast before I made this move. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. tight enough that you guys wouldn't say it out in public. Like right. you might come to me and be like, "That was fucked up, man. You didn't." ask me and you said you did but you don't just say it to the media like, like yeah. get the fuck out of here even when i was at my last company that's a pretty big company yeah. you know like they you keep would, it inside they would definitely lie sometimes and not give me the heads up yeah. when i'd be out in the field and you know i very could have thrown my whole company of course bus, but you gotta just play it but that says that says of, everything i need to know yeah. about that team and yeah well but it sucks if you're a player and you're and you get signed by that team. What do you yeah, really do? You know, like it sucks. You have to play for a clearly a guy that doesn't give a fuck. Listen, okay, whether it's racist or it's not, it clearly upsets some people. You know what I mean? And they have a valid like to stand on. And the fact that he just completely ignores it, like, well, doesn't it, your home teams, your hometown, still go by the Redskins? Yeah. 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 Maybe we should get some pickets. I don't, you know, it's not my, I'm, not my job. You want to live in a racist town? Live in, oh, you're not even living there anymore. There. Okay. Hey. Right. So, are we doing the whole, the whole Foster spiel right now? Open and shut. Well, Mo- yeah. Open shot. Yeah, move let's, on. let's get this. No, I want to be told again. I'm right. One more time. When we drafted him, you were pumped. I was fucking pumped because I legitimately thought that we were getting a dog, like an alpha dog enforcer, a badass. But what we really got 
was a headache. A puppy that still fucking ripped up all your shit all over the house and still pissed all over the house and couldn't behave. And I mean, it, when we drafted him, I didn't go back and and watch him in pressers. I had absolutely no idea what kind of personality he had. I just saw his play on the field. And what I saw at Alabama was a straight-up alpha enforcer dog. And that is not what we got. What we got was a puppy that was not ready to be a leader on this team. Yeah, I mean, Rob. He's a moron. Yeah, I I, I agree completely with the moron. moron. And it's not all his fault, for sure. Because he comes from a fucked up background. Yeah, very fucked. Everything's up. Everything's fucked up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, But he's a fucking moron. Agreed. Straight he, up. He should have gotten and, rid of that girl. And he's, I won't go there. But he's a. She should have never been there. He's a fucking. Did you see Rappaport? What Rappaport said. Rappaport called him a con artist. Yeah, I saw that. He's not just like with Alden Smith. Everyone knew what he was. <laughs> everyone, there was no hiding it. But with Reuben Foster, he's scamming everyone at all times. He's pulling shit and making up lies and, and telling people it's different, it's not what it is. Whereas with Alden Smith, it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a fuck-up. I'm here drunk, passed out against the steering wheel of my car. I'm not trying to say I didn't do it. I'm not trying to con you into believing something different. Where Foster is conning everyone into seeing this whole mirage of what's really going on. Here's my whole standpoint on it. I mean, the football season is six months long if you're not a playoff team. Com- combine that with training camp, you're looking at seven months. Combine that with OTAs, you're looking at eight months. That gives you three to four months off to do whatever the fuck it is you want to do. And you choose the night at the team hotel before an away game. There's only 16 games in a season. That's 16 nights well, before what are you a saying? game. What are you saying? That he had, I just think that he had his fucking crazy old lady with him, and they had a fucking beef inside the hotel. I, the I, fact that it occurred on one of the sixteen nights of the right, year like before he, a game. He wasn't. Oh, let's say he's not smart enough to to not be involved with someone crazy. Yeah, he's not even smart enough to not have a crazy person at the team hotel. Right, six, eight games. Yes, eight away games. Like all he's year. not even that smart. Like it's that it's beyond stupid. Right. Like it's like totally far like, different beyond. And it's I think it speaks to something like the 49ers are a team who like if Pierre Grosson shows up with his wife and kids at a team hotel on the road, if they're there, I don't think anybody bats an eye. I think they're probably happy to see them, you know what I mean? But like this guy and this girl, like the fact that they didn't know she was there, you know, or you know, she, they're doing it shady, you know what I mean? Like, I heard I heard either Shanahan or Lynch saying that they have I think they have two floors at the hotel and that she wasn't on one of those floors. Like they got, he or she got a room on a different floor because security would have known yeah, that yeah, she was yeah. on oh, for sure. the team's floor and would have stopped it. Like it's not like he's going above and beyond and more stuff came out that she's been around all along. Oh, I'm sure. Like, yeah. they, like they, they didn't know, they say they didn't know, but she was like at his house in October and then some other times. And apparently he has another girlfriend right now. So it's like, it's some shady shit. I mean, th- here's the thing. We all have friends that have dated crazy women. And I've dated Some of us have ourselves. I'm married to one. But there's certain times and places where you go, all right, this isn't the place for this crazy person. Mm-hmm. And also, if it was jeopardizing your entire career. Like, after the, I can get one time. I wouldn't do it, but I can understand it. But once you see that career jeopardization in front of you, I feel like if you can't learn from that, you're, you're toast. You're never going to learn. Yeah, like for me, like I like guess... what's the wake-up call going to be? Like for me, with the, the, the one craziest person I was ever involved with, I think we know who that was, right? <laughs> right, pretty yeah. safe to say. And uh, like I went, I put up with all sorts of crazy shit, and I just kind of, I rolled with it. But when she finally crossed the line and sent letters to my current girlfriend and my parents... Like, that's when I was like, this is it. Like, the, I'm done officially now. You know what yeah. I mean? Because, A, there was fabricated lies in there. You know what I mean? Completely mm-hmm. made up shit, you know? And then, uh, so that, y- y- but regardless, I mean, it still took me to that to finally draw the line. Oh, and, and you, and, your th- everyone's threshold is different. I mean, yeah. th- this is why I don't judge what happened, because you admittedly have done things that you would judge someone else for doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. it happens. Like, I, I'm not yeah. going to go there, yeah. right? And nobody was there in the room. So this, yeah. going back to the first time, 
as far as I'm concerned, this could be everything from he actually beat the shit out of her the first time and she recanted to get money and he beat her up again. That's one extreme. Or she really did make it up last time and she made it up again this time. Yeah. Either way, it doesn't matter. Right. It's, Either it's way, it's just insanity. It's that the two different occurrences match up, or that whether it's it be true or correct. false. Correct. Oh, my guess is that both of them are somewhere in the middle. Yeah. That's my guess. Because her story about the first time about getting hit eight to ten times, she didn't get hate, hit eight to ten times by fucking Reuben Foster. If, if Reuben Foster hit one of us eight to ten times, we'd be in the fucking hospital. He's a fucking massive, giant NFL football player. Like, he's not just some dude beating up his girlfriend. Right, exactly. Like, he's like, a fucking yeah, monster. He, he's a savage. Yeah. Like, he, you and I are going to the hospital if he hit us eight to ten times. There's no way she's just like, got some scratches from it. Like, she'd be fucked up. So uh, my guess is it's somewhere in the middle. I'm sure he laid his hands on her. And again, even if he did or didn't, I don't care. That means nothing to me. I feel bad for her if she did get assaulted. I feel bad for him if he didn't assault her. Either way, none of that matters, and none of that is why the team cut him. The team cut him because he's clearly a bad decision maker. And this all comes back on top of John Lynch, where there's people saying, why did you draft him in the first place? Uh, There were teams that had him off the board, blah, 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 blah. You know, that's revisionist history, in my opinion. Always. When it when he was taken, I mean, everybody, except for Joe, was enthralled by Let, the pick. Let's say he didn't take him, right? And the Saints take him next. No one, no one is going, thank God John Lynch didn't trade up and take Reuben Foster. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's insanity. And going forward, like, as far as drafting, you know, uh, choir boys or... or you know, guys that have absolutely nothing on there. You can't. You can't. We won't have a team in the way. NFL. You cannot live that way. Yeah. You, it's a case by case basis. You took a chance on a guy, it didn't work out. What is Tyreek Hill? Took a chance on him. Navarro Bowman. Navarro Bowman took a chance on him. Yeah, you, you can't. for every guy where it doesn't work out, there's a guy where it does work out, and they end up being an All Pro talent. But absolutely. we've also had. I think it's it's tough because I think Alden Smith is still fresh and so. You know, so many minds, and I understand it's different regimes. Not even him, just all the shit in between that, like with with the, Ray McDonald too. Yeah, Ray yeah. McDonald and, and, and the fullback. Uh, yeah, Bruce Miller. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's out of the league completely. Yeah, good. Yeah, but I, but I'm shocked. If you just signed. judge John Lynch on John Lynch's moves, that's the biggest one, mm-hmm. and we don't even know what happened. It's it's not a fucking it's not a Ray Rice thing yet. It's not that on that level. It's not even an Alden Smith thing yet. So it's one time, and he it's his very first time doing this job. So we have to see what happens from here. And I agree. If if you're not going to draft anyone that has any sort of character flaw, you're not going to have an NFL team. These are college. These are college dudes. Like every person that gets drafted in the NFL is a dude in college. Think about that for a minute. We all have friends that are in college or have been in college or we've been to colleges. No dude in college is doing the right thing all the time. If he is, he's a fucking dork and not making the NFL. Yes. I mean. And, and this uh, uh, John Lynch is a guy that won a Super Bowl playing behind Warren Sapp. Right. And like right. A, a bunch of fucking questionable For sure. character guys. You yeah, know, you, you got to understand that in order to win in this league, you need to have guys like that that have an edge that are enforcers on your team. And if there's some questionable character to go along with the dog that they are on the field, you got to live with that because without dogs, you're not winning in this league. And, and there's a lot of stuff we didn't know. Like, they did have someone assigned to him. Yeah. They weren't living in his house, but they were checking in with him every single day. So there crazy. was a lot of imagine stuff going on that we didn't you, know. Imagine your job gave you a handler. That's their, and that's that's the whole point. Like that's the talent level. Like you're, they're not paying for someone to be a handler for Bradley Pinion. No, they're I getting hear, a new punter if Bradley Pinion's. A I problem, hear you. You know, yeah, but it's wild. It is what it is. Wow. I'm shocked. just imagine. I'm shocked he was picked up. I'm imagine shocked. a place where where we have Alden Smith on our team, and Reuben Foster is not. Like, how much better is this team immediately? Baby arms. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little different, but like, Alden different. Smith yeah. was a fucking Hall, Hall of Famer. Famer. Like, Hall of Famer. Yeah, sure. I could buy that. If not, at the very least, top five pass rusher in the league. Yeah, absolutely. At the very least. And for and then, 10 years. Yeah, imagine we have him. And, oh, I don't even want to think about it. 
Yeah, it's been a it's been a really rough stretch, up, especially on this defense that we have invested so much into. Yeah, I'm not even going to be critical of so little out of of and, Shanahan and Lynch yet. Uh, you know, I will be, but right now, for today at least, I'm going to just strictly break the balls of Ruben Foster and what a fucking. I mean, Solomon Thomas is. is a disappointment to us, but thank God, Ruben Foster was not taken at number three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thank. Christ, he was not. At least Solomon Thomas, even if he only contributes for five downs this week, he's (laughs) contributing to our football team. Yeah. Like, for real. And thank God that some stupid team picked up Foster, because that dumps some money, that dumps some cap space, I assume. I'm sure there's some dead cap space, but... All right, so... I can move on to injuries. You got anything else on on the Foster thing? No, I was right. Joe was right. (laughs) Well, are we going to talk about the rumors that he got arrested again today? Well, yeah. If you want... Yeah, I, mean, I don't have any proof. But Breaking news! <laughs> 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 that was the breaking news um, audio. Um, so we heard a rumor. Rob's got his ear to the street. Uh, he's got a direct line out to the Bay Area through some fucking nerd. And uh, <laughs> suppose... Should we delete that? No. Okay, I don't know if they listen. I don't know. I'm sorry. Sorry, I don't you mean... win some, you lose some. I don't mean to be like that. <laughs> I'm sure he's a great guy. Um, supposedly says that Ruben Foster was arrested again today with four ounces of weed, possibly in an airport. Um, possibly edibles. Possibly edibles. If anybody can confirm or deny this, call us. You know how to find us. How did that not get out if it really did happen? I know, because it's yeah. been I feel like it'd be way now. bigger. I feel yeah. like somebody made that be, up. It'd be out already. It's really sad. It'd be awesome if it did, though. Especially because both places are legal weed. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That makes it even better. (laughs) Yeah, you know, you can buy weed in Massachusetts now. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. And California said you can fly with it from our airport. LAX said you can can fly out, but we can't help you when you land. Wait, one more thing we do have to say. Is it not crazy that this dude was arrested for hitting his girlfriend? He has a job. And Colin Kaepernick still is unemployed? (laughs) That's, That's... No, no. Washington, the yeah. team, the football team from Washington. Yeah, I know. Just claimed Reuben Foster on I waivers know. after he got dumped for terrible decision making and an allegation of domestic abuse. That same team also just signed Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez. I hear you. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. <laughs> That's butt fumble. It's crazy. How how great would it be if? Colin Kaepernick replaced Alex Smith, It would be though. so fun, <laughs> Comes back, go, <laughs> takes him to the Super Bowl. You know? That's probably why they didn't sign him. Alex yeah. Smith was probably like, I, I'm telling you right now. Listen, <laughs> listen, you're already perceived as racist, so it's no skin off your back. Just, I beg you to roll with me on this one. And I'm sure Dan Snyder was like, we got you, kid. Don't worry. Yeah, Dan Snyder said, don't worry, we're not drafting He's that. Like, no, he gave, he gave him that. The hand over the face. You know what that means. That I mean, we poke at the Browns, poke at ourselves. Washington is by far the worst run organization in the league. And they, they might get a few more wins than Cleveland and we do over the past five years. But a big picture wise, they are dysfunctional as all hell. Are you ready to admit to me that it still looks better to be a Browns fan than a Niners fan? Absolutely not. Okay. No you know who the Browns head coach way. is right now, right? I don't know. Yeah, we have another okay. racist right You know now. who the Browns' quarterback is right now, right? Baker Mayfield. Okay, where's our quarterback? Listen, I've been Greg, thinking a lot Greg, about this. Greg Williams. I've been thinking a lot about this. Greg, get, get into injuries. Greg Williams. I know. He'll be, Bounty Gate, Greg Williams. I know. Defensive coordinator under Jeff Fisher, Greg Williams. I know. Greg Williams. I know, but he'll be gone. They're going to get uh, Arians. That is a good solution, usually, to get rid of 17 head coaches in a row. <laughs> Usually leads to Super Bowl victories. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> it uh, is definitely not better to be a Browns fan than a 49ers no, fan. Absolutely. Period. Not. Zero. Ridiculous. You're the one person on earth that thinks that. I don't think that necessarily. There's not a Browns fan on earth that thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking telling you, there's not a single Browns fan that wishes they were a Browns fan and not a 49ers fan. I'm just saying, they got more wins. No, you said it's better, and it's a better mm-hmm. outlook to be a Browns fan than a 49ers yeah, fan. And no one agrees with you on earth. They're riding high with Baker Mayfield. Greg they're, Williams doesn't agree with you. Greg Williams wishes he was on the 49ers. The Browns are going to make the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not happening, but injuries. 
Pierre Garçon they was had a win streak limited at practice today with a knee injury. Joshua Garnett was limited at <laughs> practice today with a thumb injury. Oh, fuck him. <laughs> fuck him. Kwaski Tart left the game with a stinger in the same oh. shoulder, and he is uh, no contact at practice. Jesus Malcolm Christ. Smith is still dealing with tendonitis in his lower leg. Oh he God. missed the second half, and he this is limited is the, at practice. Is this a joke? This looks like something that would... Be, that, oh, wait, wait, wait. Ready for the next one? Oh, hold on. uh, Jimmy Ward, broken arm. Yeah, hold he on. is sent to IR. But the, <laughs> hold on. The, the t- all he broke his arm last year, didn't he? All these I don't other know, ones. He, I know did. He, went to he definitely did. They look like the, an injury report from like a geriatric volleyball <laughs> game. You know what I mean? Like yeah, these guys got to get the fuck out. This isn't football. This is fucking nanny nanny poo poo. Fucking pussy n- <laughs> fucking nits. DJ oh. Reed is out this week with started. a foot strain and a chest contusion. Um, Ruben Foster released, obviously. We claim defensive back Godwin. Oh boy. Rob Igwai even, Bouquet. Yeah. Igwai Bouquet. He's got the uh, pronunciation on there to help me out. Off Igwai Bouquet. Waivers from Igwai Tampa Bouquet. Bay. Is that how it's said? Igwai B U K. Yeah, Bouquet. That's how you say that. I think B Y O O is probably B U. B U. B-U. B-U. B-U-K. Right. Yeah. Gonna... B-U-K. Uh We promoted. L- uh, linebacker James Anwalu. I figured you could get that one. From the practice squad. And we signed linebacker Tyrell Adams and wide receiver Max McCaffrey to the practice squad. That is the other McCaffrey's brother. That is. He's been here before, right? Yeah, he was with us in yeah. training camp. So that is that. Um, we could get into this absolutely atrocious game. Hold on, wait, 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 Poppy. I have no desire to talk about this game. The only thing I have to say about this game is that this was an embarrassing game. Yeah. There's only been a couple of those this year. This was one of them. Unfortunately, I spent just as much time on this game as I did at all the other games, so I have to talk about it. Um, Offense, off the top. Enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah, are you kidding me? Well, I All the way through, man. Dedicated. I want to say something. I want to just say that (laughs) it's... Like he said, it's embarrassing. And injuries happen in the NFL. And if your best plan after this was C.J. Beathard, then you're still making bad decisions. That's all I'm saying. He just doesn't have a plan for anything. He's a fucking he's a, ugh, he's a fucking chicken with his head cut off, making decisions. They have no idea what they're doing, these two. So who's the backup to Tom Brady? <laughs> Listen. No, they, no, who's the backup to Tom Brady? I don't know. Is, you, don't, you don't because you know. you're speaking ignorantly. No, I do. It's, uh, what's his name? Exactly. It's the guy. Exactly. Would right. you rather him or C.J. Beathard? Listen. You don't go into a season planning for your star quarterback to not play the fucking year. Because no. when that and happens, you can't afford you, it. your year's over. And you can't afford it. And everyone's, uh, I know. Unless for I know, the one Nick Foles, time, Nick Foles the one has, time it ever happened. First of all, Nick Foles played absolutely terrible when he came in last year. He did. And he got hot at the exact perfect time. That's right. what happened with I, Nick Foles. Carson Wentz got him to what nine and one before I'm, that happened. I'm just saying, if, if they can't, and he looks like dog shit. But if they year. can't beat even the most subpar teams with their backup quarterback, then I don't know. It just doesn't seem great to me. It seems very bad, very very bad. Well, I just uh, I have no yeah. I have no confidence in the future. It wasn't in the injuries, but Marquise Goodwin missed the game completely, dealing with a family issue. Another, he's still out, and the fact one. that another one, you know, he with the sh- shit that he dealt with last year and played, the fact that he missed the game due to a family and issue, and nothing's coming out, and nothing's coming out yeah. about it. Uh, you got to wonder that it's something a, a bit more serious because last year, you know, he lost his uh, child. What's um, going on with his sister? That's what I'm, it, it might be something like that. She's mentally challenged. Is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I know time. it had something to do with that thing with OBJ, right? There was something to do with his sister about that? Well, they were just dancing for her. Yeah. But, like, it made her, she said, it was, like, it was for her specifically, and it made her Oh, uh, uh, well, happy. I, just, I maybe that's she's just a because big they're fan. close. She might be a big okay. fan of his because he's, like, beyond just a football player, you know? Well, last year, he, he lost uh, his child pre- prematurely, premature birth, and he lost his father last year. So, like, if news came out tomorrow that he lost his sister, who he's incredibly close with, hmm. then I, I, it's completely understandable. But... So we were playing this game. Our, our number uh, coming into the year, our number our number three quarterback was our our starter, and our number three wide receiver was actually our number one. 
Who? How we doing? Right. <laughs> our and number three wide receiver coming into the year was actually our number one this past week in uh, Dante Pettis. Yeah. Mm, he looked good. One touchdown. He was our number three to start the year. Yeah. Offense off the top. 369 yards, uh, 221 passing, 148 rushing. We were one for eight on third down. Wait, what was um, what was wrong with Garcon? Knee. Yeah, knee injury. Do you think if we were like competing for playoffs, he would play? Possibly. I don't even want him to play at all at this point. Yeah, yeah the whole the point. The whole point is to see what we have in yeah. the rest of them. He, I, I, that he's might, gone. If he if we were competing for a playoff spot and he was having a good year, he would be playing. Agreed. Uh, we were one of two. Let me. I don't know if you guys heard me. Let me reemphasize that. We were one of eight on third down. One third down conversion the whole game. Can you tell me what our average third and distance was? Because it felt to me like it was over two. Oh, a billion miles, probably. <laughs> That's what it felt like. Uh, we were one of two in the red zone. We allowed four sacks and nine quarterback hits, and we turned the ball over twice. Everyone yeah. good? It was uh, painful to watch on the offensive side if, of the ball. If Okay, so we start the season, and we have Jimmy G. Let's go before week one. We have Jimmy G. We have Jarek McKinnon, but we don't know what Jarek McKinnon is. Like, we'll all, Everybody likes to point out that Jarek McKinnon got injured before the year. I don't think we year, could go there but, anymore. But none of us know what he was. Like, we don't know. Like we, Shanahan says that was the guy he picked, but you and I don't know what Jarek McKinnon was going to do. And the way Matt Breed has played, I don't think blaming McKinnon does anything for us right now because Breed has played great. Yeah, I've I've come around on that. You it has a, a running not, game. Losing has not been, McKinnon isn't even an excuse anymore. But, but even if it, but let's say I'm just saying. All right, let's go to right before week one, right? And we look at our roster. Jimmy G's there, and uh, Jarek McKinnon's there, and everybody's healthy, right? If you told, if you then. Uh, that day told me against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was going to be the what we saw on the field, those people, I would go, okay, well, that's what you get when everybody's hurt. Right. It wouldn't be embarrassing to me. But because we've, we've taken seen, such a ride no, to get here? <laughs> it, no, it's because we've seen Nick Mullins play good. We've seen Dante Pettis have a good game. We've seen Matt Breida have a good We've seen these things happen. We almost beat the fucking Packers without Jimmy G. So that's what makes me embarrassed about this game because they didn't play this game like they've played the other games that they lost, even with the backups in or the third strings in. That's why this was embarrassing to me. This looked like a game where they didn't give a fuck. That's what it looked like to me. Agreed. It, it, and and it I don't know. Like only a few people like were really trying. And I don't know if that's Breda Pettis. If that has something to do with the Reuben Foster thing. I would hope not. I would hope that you know, as grown men, you move on and play your football game. But I don't know. I, I didn't no idea. see that from an offensive standpoint at all. I definitely saw that from a defensive standpoint for sure. And, I mean, it, it's it, we could sit here and, and critique it or, or guess whether how, right. how Who affected knows? they were it, about I mean, it could just Foster, be, but... It could just be the travel to the East Coast. Yeah, that's I brutal. mean, who, who the fuck knows? There, there was um, a statistic I read in the offseason that a, te- a West Coast team traveling East... Oh, it's has like an insane uphill I, battle. I sent just you guys to win. the win. Yeah. Shanahan said that Is the Forty ers traveled more in the preseason yeah. than some East Coast teams will travel the entire year. Bananas because of just because of who they play in those divisions. You know, like how the divisions line. You know, you don't always play the West, the NFC West or the AFC West. So some of those teams, uh, it was the Panthers was his exact example. He said in the preseason the Forty ers had more miles traveled then the Panthers will travel the entire year. <laughs> That's fucking nuts. Uh, well, the, the, the offense, although it was only nine points, I mean, it did kind of look not that far off from the average of what our offense has been this year. We just didn't fucking score. That's the bottom line. We didn't score points. Yeah, why? Uh, everything went bad at the wrong times, and, and we got fucked on one touchdown for sure. But to start the game, Breda runs a halfback counterplay that was good for 33 yards from our own 10. First play of the game. Uh, Nick Mullins, on the next play, he fumbles due to not being able to throw the ball to Dante Pettis, who trips over his own feet just as he was about to break open. And Mullins, uh, he got the ball swatted from, swatted from him, and, and McGlinchey recovered it. Let us not forget after the run that Joe let us know we were off to a sizzling start. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that was I said that about the defense. Oh, it came through. Well, they were too. It came through. Yeah, but he, we went three. They went three and out, and then he must have sent it at that point. But That's I didn't read it until Brita got the run, and I'm like, 
That's a great thing to say, and then <laughs> shit went. <laughs> no, I, I said it about the defense, yeah, just because they went three and out, and timing. I know Steve had said But, yeah, you know, yeah, three and out, and then Brita has that run. Yeah. After the first four plays of the game, I'm going, all right, it's going to be a good Sunday. And, um, <laughs> the I mean, the offense just, like, uh, uh, touch and go the whole fucking day. Uh, Breda later on springs another one for 21 yards in the second quarter. He gets us down to the 10-yard line. Uh, outstanding blocking by McGlinchey, Kittle, and Juice. Um McGlinchey, I mean, that's uh, probably Lynch's biggest hit in the draft so far, besides Kittle. A hundred percent, and I, it, the only thing is that you're not seeing the the team as a whole take this massive jump because such such a big hit in the first round. Because tr- I'm sorry, I know we shit on Trent Brown like crazy, but he was not a bad right tackle. Well, he's getting it done with uh, New England, right? He's just a lazy fat fuck. He's there. a lazy fat fuck. Problem. So, like, uh, McGlinchey being such a huge hit isn't catapulting this team because we had solid yeah, tackle yeah. play from Trent Brown last year. So it's not like we filled this huge void with McGlinchey, but what we did do is we have a linchpin on that line for, for a hopefully long time. the next fucking yeah. 10, 12 years. It it's kind of makes it, he's, like, going to be the Joe Staley, just somebody who we yep. know will be there. And he's always the example when they talk about the type of character they're looking for, too. Yes. He's always the example. Uh, uh, offense is finally able to get into a rhythm and Breda at, at this point in the game I think it was like midway through the second quarter just looking unstoppable just slashing up Tampa Bay defense as he should uh, and we finally get down to the 13 um, yard line and Pettis is able to juke the defender like right out of his shoes and get wide open for a 13 yard touchdown and I think that that play right there is prime example number one as to why Shanahan wanted to trade up in the second round to get Dante Pettis, just because of the separation that he's able to get with his footwork. I got to tell you, I was disappointed. No cat thing. No cat celebration. I was looking for it. I did it. This whole fucking autocorrect, too. Every time I write his fucking name, I can't even get it in there. I picked my cat up and actually licked him. Uh, It was weird and uncomfortable. (laughs) It was nice. We got the ball back with about three minutes left in the game. I'm sorry, three minutes left in the half. And We're still Mullins. in the first half, Steve. You're killing me. <laughs> we'll get there quick. Uh, Mullins goes down for back-to-back sacks after the two-minute warning, which basically just ruined our drive. It was like third and 35. After halftime, the offense sputters, but then comes alive after a defensive penalty gives us a first down. Once that happened, we were hitting passes to Pettis over the middle. Uh, a huge pass to Breda down on the sideline goes for a big gain. And then Jeff Wilson, the 10-yard touchdown gets overturned. I think we can all agree that that was not a touchdown. The Jeff Wilson 10-yard run yeah. that yeah. got overturned. Yeah. Definitely not a touchdown. Oh, yeah, I agree. Breda, on the next run, 110% got in yes. on that touchdown. There on is no goal. soul on earth yep. that would be able to convince me otherwise. Yep. But they, they didn't give it to him. Shanahan they, didn't challenge that one. Instead of challenging it, because... Here's what happened. So they call him down at like the six inch line, mm-hmm. like right on the line. So Shanahan's got a decision to make. And instead of challenging that, he figures get up to the line quick, get the playoff, and just get the touchdown instead of gambling with the challenge. And the, you know how those challenges go once it's muddy like that. Yeah. So then he challenges the next one, which there's no clear shot of. Yeah. Uh, no, the next one was the. Like another bad and coach, that one might have been another bad too. coaching decision. The Mullen sneak. That one might have been in it too. I, you it was could, close. It might have been in, sure. Yeah. But the ball was just like down but, low. But the Brita one see is it. in. The Brita one was so obvious. Yeah. Another bad coaching decision. And the fourth down, we were going to go for it on fourth down, fourth and inches mm-hmm. to get into the end zone and false start. We were going to make the playoffs this year too. Don't don't just keep going. So at, I believe at that point in the game, the em. score was <laughs> six to thirteen. We were down six to thirteen. <laughs> Ten to seven. <laughs> Pulling for it. That Breda touchdown counts. The whole game is different yeah. because of that. Yeah. Are we getting the ball back after half? Well, no, no, this is already after halftime. Uh-huh. But we take the lead with that play. Uh, Mullins is able to... Or, How about the... Hold on real quick. How yep. about the Kittle run? The Kittle run was sweet. The end around to Kittle. He's fast. Did you jerk? End around to the tight end. Did he you, is a How fast... many teams are pulling that? I mean, that's like something they do with Vernon. Yeah. I see, you know, but yeah, very rarely. Uh, first of all... Vernon Davis had so much hype when we drafted him. Huge. I'm way bigger fan of George Kittle. 
huge. There was a minute where I was a fan of Vernon Davis when he made those couple touchdowns in the playoffs, and the, there was those were, there was a a short window of time when I was big on Vernon Davis, but not like I am on George Kittle. Oh, I don't know, I, it, Vernon the ceiling wise because we're at the beginning of the George Kittle. I know. Thing. But in, in my lifetime, you, you're a little bit older than me. You probably saw a lot earlier shit than before I did. Uh, the Vernon Post yeah, was of course. the biggest play I've ever seen in you know my the, the heyday of my fandom was the Vernon Post. So I I guess I'm probably just soiled by the way Vernon is now. The yeah, way the way he left. And I mean, even but I think Vernon was a way bigger cunt when he like those first years before yeah, Singletary yeah. straightened him out. He was the biggest cunt. That's it's, when I was having even a tough time with him. It's constantly talked about that if if uh, Vernon wasn't such an arrogant, cocky cunt at the at the combine and with the team interviews, there's no way he was gonna fall. He fell to what did we get him at seven? Pick number seven or eight or nine or something like 11. that. Eleven. Was it 11? Yeah. yeah. Well, wherever we got him, there's no way that he yeah. was getting out of the top five. But because of his attitude, that's that's where he fell. So just f- Yeah, but uh, another thing to be sorry to be said about that, without Mike Singletary and him, without their paths crossing, I don't know if Vernon Davis is... Even has a career. The, uh, yes, agreed. I, he might have been out of the NFL. If yeah, he, or he might have just been T.O., who knows. Yeah, uh, maybe. But yeah, at least he turned into a pretty decent person. So we're down late in the game. Mullen forces a deep shot to Pettis that gets picked off in the end zone. I'm not entirely sure if he even saw the safety there. I, 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 I don't, it I don't, looked like he just winged it. I didn't see any reason why he would have thrown that uh, at that, that point That looked like game. backyard football, like he just let it rip for some reason. There was still nine minutes left yeah, to there play. Was te- it wasn't, I'm not saying it was the right thing to do, but it looked like he just closed his eyes and grip and rip. Yeah, that was like a, that was like a time's running out. Yeah, yeah, like if the clock was at two minutes and we needed two scores, that's what that throw looked like. Yeah. Not like it was at nine minutes. And then later in the game, uh, obviously garbage time. I I believe we were down uh, 9 to 27 or whatever, and he throws another ill-advised pass that gets tipped up in traffic and picked off. He was trying to hit Kittle over the middle, which he did three plays in a row. It was Kittle, Kittle, Kittle. They force it. And then went yeah, to go Kittle for a fourth yeah, time. He didn't have anyone else like, he could trust. Yeah. Steve, you're right. Pick six on Vernon Davis. We, we got him at six. Yeah. I said closer. seven. Yeah, well, I mean, you were closer than I was. That is it for the offense. Um, it's clear that, to me, that uh, the deficiency of talent at quarterback and, and wide receiver is huge. The fact that uh, Matt Breda has come on so strong this season, he I, th- I think he's a good running back. I don't think he's a great running back, but I think he's a good running back. And I think that this offensive line is blocking their asses off for him including blocks on the edge from Kittle, and Kyle Juszczyk is really coming on big in the run game. I mean, let's be clear. We went into the season with our 1-2 and two being Goodwin and Garcon. Right. I mean, to anyone else in the league, that's a joke. Right, it is. To any other team in the league, well, I don't, that's a joke 1-2. The way Marquise Goodwin finished the year last year, he almost As had 1,000 yards. We're 49ers fans. We, we saw the league, it, though. Yeah, but around the league... That is a joke. Agreed. I would just those two is a joke. I would uh, completely agree with that. I mean, if Goodwin was your number two to someone else, DeAndre Hopkins or anybody that's a real number one, you're like that's a solid one two. But if that's your one and Garcon's your two, uh... yeah, agreed. I mean, there's not much worse one twos. And then when your number three is pick a rookie. But the thing, I think you can survive that way. If we had, if I had told you before the season started that Kittle was going to be a top three tight end for this sure, year, for sure, you can live that for sure. way. I, give and give Drew Brees a healthy Goodwin, Garcon, and George Kittle. He'll make it go. He's going to make a playoff run, of course, yeah. of course. But give those, give those three to, I don't know, pick a middle of the road guy, Joe Flacco. He ain't going nowhere. No. I just don't know, you know, even before the year, I yeah, I don't know when, when they're going to beef these positions up. I just don't know what these guys are doing. Well, Pettis is second rounder. I, I, I well, believe that he has a, a future on this team. He, yeah. hasn't, he hasn't shown the ability to be like a number one. Or, well, you can't beef up everything in one year. I mean, it doesn't uh, work that uh, way. It's, no. It's just, <laughs> you can only have so many picks. We're, we're two years in. <laughs> okay. Year and a half. That's all I got for the offense. All right, well, let's go, let's go with the defense. Defense off the top, uh, 420 yards allowed, 312 oh. passing, oh. 108 rushing. Oh. We allowed 7 of 13 on third down, 2 of 2 in the red zone we allowed. Uh, we only had one sack 
and six quarterback hits. They manipulated us like a like a like a man with his fingers. And the biggest one of all, we are facing the team that turns it over like no <laughs> other, and we got nothing, nothing. zero turnovers. It's gross. Did we guys. pass them for worse ratio? I don't know. I didn't. We're check getting that. closer because they were worse in the league. We were second. I like how Sherman backed up the team on dumping the other guy down on Bucky or on uh, Foster. Yeah. He yeah, was I, like, you know, he I, really left him no choice. I don't know how you can. I don't no. know how you can back him up. No, find, I know. find me a person that can logically back up what Reuben Foster did and try to justify keeping him. The team from Washington. <laughs> <laughs> they, That's just how the NFL works, though. Like uh, us keeping him would get way more criticism than Washington picking him up. I don't know how. Well, here's the thing: if if let's say she comes out and says that he didn't hit her again, right? Yeah. Did he? What? What? Really, would you not be dra- what really would cause you to not sign him as a as a team? Because he betrayed his other team and they, didn't tell they, them the truth. They really I mean, have if, nothing to lose if they find out that these accusations are true. Then they just then they just cut him. Right, but my point is, if she let's say she comes out again and says I made this all up, I'm still a crazy bitch. I made up the last time he never hit me. Then they so they signed a guy that is involved with a crazy woman that's accused him of stuff and said he didn't do it mm-hmm. and had a weed arrest. Yeah. He really doesn't look all that terrible. It's certainly not a good look. No, but it's not as bad as... It's not as bad as we would look if yeah. he was still on the team today. For sure. For sure. Uh, early in the game, Mike Evans able to blow past Sherman for a 44-yard reception. Yeah. That's something that we hadn't seen this year. You wanted to see that. I did. I That was something that was that needed to be seen by everyone. Because I do not want to go into an offseason blind at a position. I think that Richard Sherman is playing at a high level, but there are clearly things that he can no longer do. And Was there he, supposed to be a safety over there? I, it's it's hard for me to tell because I don't know what their assignments yeah, that's, are. That's why I can't. It was a single high safety, which usually in that case, the safety kind of chooses the side of the field. And I saw him maybe favoring helping Witherspoon because that's, I mean, let's be real here. <laughs> So yeah, it, I see the problem I have is that's the one time we've seen it. Yeah, and Sherman is not a guy that's going to do like Witherspoon and put his arms up. Absolutely, if he not. doesn't have help, so we don't even know that. And also, Mike Evans is Mike Evans. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a cunt. First of all, let's not put that aside. Mike Evans is a fucking cunt. <sighs> we got to see that. Did you watch the game? Because he's a cunt. Well, well OBJ's a cunt. Mike they Evans can't... is a cunt too. He's just not as big of a cunt. Yeah. He's fucking high up there, though. He is a fucking cocksucker. And he's another one that steps out of bounds all the time in, avoid, in avoiding contact. You'll never see him put his head down and turn it into a body and try to get five yards by pushing somebody. And he's a big motherfucker that should be doing that. But my point is he's still fast and he's still a good wide receiver. And I wanted him when, when he was in the draft bad. I wanted yeah. him real bad. So it's not like he got beat by Pierre Garçon. Exactly. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, in this game, it's just as evident as all the other games this year. We have zero pass rush. And not only are we unable to rush the passer, we're unable to contain the passer. Winston easily breaks the contain in the pocket and throws a six-yard touchdown to Cameron Brait. I mean, uh, he was being covered by Kwaski Tart. I'm not going to put that touchdown on Tart. Hey, Winston has no, way that, too much time to throw. The reason he got out of the pocket was because the coverage was good. Right. It, yeah, he was there a while, a long time. Um, great. Buckner is able to get home later on a coverage sack. I, I looked at him like, well, Buckner, he just does what he does every other play. There was just coverage. Yeah, better He coverage. got home. And, I mean, I'm watching Solomon Thomas play. He needs to play with way more explosion in his lower body and his hips because it's not like he's not strong enough to go, run through. Go ahead, Joe. I'll leave that one for you. <laughs> no, I think I've Explosion in his hips? Yeah, yeah, I knew that yeah, would get yeah. And lower body. Yeah. And lower body. Watching him close. <laughs> It's not like he doesn't have the strength to play in this league, but I see him where whenever he engages his arms with the offensive lineman, all of his forward momentum stops. So he is not playing with any leverage in his lower body as far as trying to... Uh, I, I don't, he needs a lot of work. Is he a baby heart? Definitely not a baby heart. He okay. plays hard. Okay. He, he, is, he looks like... Solomon Thomas looks like a guy that is trying really hard okay is he like that kid that he looks just, like a, like a baby just learning to walk and he's giving it all he's got and his yes. legs are still a little yeah. wobbly yeah. and you're like if he could just put that step together yeah okay i mean he has well, there's still hope then i 
I'm not seeing like the the natural athleticism that I was hoping for, and I'm not saying that he's ho- he's certainly not hopeless, but he needs a lot of work. Kind of like he Ar- is... Armstead when we got him. Yeah, and still and different, and still different. yeah. But different. Armstead's having quietly a decent season. Hmm. He hasn't gotten hurt yet, but he's, he's also not playing up to first round potential. Oh, absolutely not. No. But he's showing up more than Solomon has this year. Yeah. Yeah. They're uh, all fucking middle of the road. Pudding. While we're on the defense, this is the best game we've seen from Akella Weatherspoon. Without a doubt, At that pass in a interference while. was an Bullshit. absolute joke. Totally fake. Uh, sure, watching Akella Weatherspoon play football is fun, but you know what's even more fun? Gambling on how many times he'll fuck up. <laughs> when you have some action on the games, guys, you've heard me talking about this for weeks, and some of you are still on the sidelines. Whether you're an expert or a rook, you should be betting at my book. If you're the kind of guy, company name, it's right? my bookie. It's okay, everybody. It's mybookie.ag. <laughs> Listen, if you're the fucking kind of guy that likes to bet a little and win a lot, like playing the numbers on roulette, you can create a big parlay. Pick three teams to win, <laughs> and if you hit all three, you could turn... One hundred dollars. One hundred to six hundred. Six hundred. There is so much to bet on college basketball and football. Football, football, football. NBA, NHL, custom props, even esports. You name it. My bookie is the one bet I know you'll be happy with all year. I recommend these guys because I really trust them. My bookie has been in business for years. They've got great online reviews, and their mobile site is easy to use. It's great. I went to go deposit some money this past week, and I'm just going to leave that right where it, right where it is. So sign up this week, and my bookie will give you a 50%, if you can't sign up this week, a 50% deposit bonus. Did you get a 50% bonus when you signed up? No comment. <laughs> to jumpstart your bankroll. Did you, did you get your money back if you lost? No comment. Which you would have lost, by the I way. I didn't make it that far. It's a great way you to... You would have lost, though. I would have. But you would have got your money back. Yes. So it's really like a win. It's a great way to bank even more money when you win. Yo, I gotta be honest with you. I think my bookie, they're winners with us. They haven't taken any of our money yet. So, you <laughs> yeah, know what? Well, you lost, though. You <laughs> I, were gonna bet on Tiger. Yeah, I, I definitely lost. Okay. Also, make sure to follow at BetMyBookie on Twitter. They personally respond... To every mention and DM, not to mention they've given away more than $10,000 in free money to their followers this football season. You'll be the first to know as soon as new odds and props are posted. Don't miss out on one of the (laughs) best weeks to bet on sports this year. Log on to MyBookie right now and use promo code GOLDBLOOD and to get 50% off deposit bonus. That's promo code Gold Blood. Oh, thank God it's back. <laughs> you play, you win, you get paid, and to get fifty percent off. That's right. And to, and to get fifty percent. You know. So here's a question: Have either of you used any other site prior to my bookie being on? Yes. Okay. So so you know the difference. Yes. Okay. That's what I was just asking. I the thought difference maybe, between what. Whatever situation might have happened or might not have happened with you, yep. you've had different experiences in the past. Yes. I just didn't know if maybe that's how it is with all of them, and we didn't know because we haven't done it. That's all. Just mm. clarifying. Mm. I got nothing else. I mean, uh, one last thing I got was the joke of a touchdown we gave yeah, up. Yeah, I'm not singing. The joke of a touchdown bosses. we gave up late in the game. I mean, Wilson is able to once again break container the pocket. He rolls out right, Wilson. forcing the... Yeah, Johnny wow. Wilson. <laughs> I do have Wilson written down. It, it looked like Russell Wilson. Um, Winston. It, it, uh, he forces. He rolls out. He Racist. forces the All linebackers. All black people look alike. Racist. Yes. Forces the linebackers to react, and they leave Adam Humphreys wide open for an easy 28-yard catch-and-run touchdown. Okay. This game, to me, is not about the defense. Because going into this game, Tampa Bay was the... Had the, was the offense with the most yards in the NFL. They are a high-movement offense. They're going to get yards. And if you told me going in that we could hold them to 27 points, I'd be like, we got a shot at that. The offense was dog shit, piss poor. 
terrible. Agreed. My gripe is not getting any turnovers. A hundred percent there. That's a problem. That's and if we're not going to get any, then we can't give any. Well, well, if it was zero zero, I'll survive. We'll, but, do, but we'll to, do the blame game after we do the beasts of the week. We seem to be every single team's remedy. <laughs> the Giants, they got back on track against us. No, yeah, they're they're looking at the playoffs now. The Cardinals playoff. Cardinals haven't. I don't think the Cardinals have won a fucking game besides the two two no, against us. That's right. And uh, now the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they were turning the ball over every single week. This is our new plan to get the number one draft pick, Steve. Yeah, just get fucked. Well, I'll tell you what. Lose, lose to all the losers. I mean, we, we had two wins. I don't even wins. know what that does for us. We had two wins. Tampa Bay had three wins. So that was a huge loss for <laughs> us, like in a good way. So it's the beast of the week, twats. <laughs> Offense, it's got to be unanimous. Uh, it, it's Matt Breda for me. I, I, yeah, same. Just to be different, I'm going to give it to Catboy. You're a mark. I am a mark. Total mark. That's right. Defensive beast of the week. I don't even know. I'm giving it to Fred Warner because he's not Reuben Foster. Because he didn't beat up anybody. He didn't get arrested. Yeah, that's right. I'm give Ever. He's just a nice guy who does his job well. I'm giving it to... Akello, just based on the fact yeah, that he's not on the list. You're not allowed his, to do that. Uh, he's his play this year has just been horrible, and able to respond to that coming off of the bye week with a strong performance was very promising, and reminded me of last year down the stretch when he looked promising. I'm going to go with uh, DeForest Buckner, just because he did what he does. Doesn't matter that the rest of the team was sucking. Doesn't matter that Ruben Foster is doing whatever he's doing. The police are coming. Does, none of it matters. DeForest Buckner is just being DeForest Buckner. Before we move on, I was going to sing. Oh, go ahead. No, you go. Before we move on to another segment, um, want to talk about the Robbie Gold missed extra point? Doesn't really matter. That was wild, right? It mm-hmm. happens two times this year. Yeah, twice. Mm-hmm. It's too too. F- I like, if he's going to get misses, I'd rather he get those than field goals. You watch <laughs> Let Shanahan's him a one pointer today, three. or you just got just the injury? The yeah. Okay, I I want. I'm sure somebody has probably asked him why are we not using Dante Pettis on punt returns and and kick returns when he set college res- yeah, records in the return game, and we're not using him on returns. Mm. At so all. maybe we should send our gold blooded reporter out there to ask that question. Who's that? Matterson. Okay. Could you imagine Matters? He, he's back probably closest. He's closest, closest, closest to West the West. action. If yeah. we could get him a press pass and he would go just interview, like, I feel Shanahan. like just Joe Bro might be better for the job. <laughs> okay. No, I want to. Doesn't con- he work like he's nearby? Right. I want both. I of think them. so. I want just Joe to get everybody's <laughs> attention and then let Matters <laughs> <laughs> maybe put him on his shoulders. Yeah. So it's the blame game. <laughs> Steve, tell him. Uh, I got to think about this one. Bob, you got one. Because I can go. Yeah, why don't you go? I'm going. You know who the fuck this is on. Yet again, Steve's savior, Kyle Shanahan. Another piss poor coached game. Chalk it up his asshole. <laughs> I, I... Oh, I can't, can't think of anybody. <laughs> I mean, do I, do I blame it on Nick Mullins? Oh, Christ almighty. <laughs> What are my expe- expectations uh, for Nick Mullins? At this, at, I mean, realistically, what are my expectations for Nick Mullins? Do I expect him to win football games? I'm blaming Reuben Foster. The fact that a grown adult male is so self-absorbed that he can't put his bullshit aside for one two-day trip to a fucking place to play a fucking football game... He's so important, and it's so about him that he's got to deal with having her even f- the whole flying her there and the whole thing. Such a nice is man. He's just a cunt. He is a full-blown, pussy-whipped, goddamn fucking cunt. Period. Pussy of a man. I will fist fight Reuben Foster right now because I'm positive that he's a fucking You know I got cunt. your back, but that animal would probably I, fucking he's rape a cunt. us. No, I would just say something to hurt his feelings and it would probably break him down. Because right. he clearly can't have any fucking thoughts inside that stupid I got your is. back either way. I would just say something like, hey, heard, uh, what's her name? Alessa Ennis? Alyssa Ennis? What's her name? 
I, I think it was Elissa. Chris, it might be pronounced email. differently. So he would square up, and I would go, "Hey, I heard uh, Alyssa Ennis is sucking off Jimmy Garoppolo tonight," and he'd be like, "Oh, that'd be the end of it. I win." We got anything else? Or you're is not, that it? For you're not blaming anyone. Hmm. Who the fuck are you blaming? I'm, I'm blaming injuries. <laughs> All right. So what you could do is email us and please tell tell try to talk some sense into Steve. It's the Gold Blooded Podcast at gmail dot com. There's an Instagram account run by a wonderful young man named Michael Curran. He's nice. The podcast uh, the the handle over there is Gold Blooded Podcast. Uh, there's a Twitter Gold Blooded Pod. Um, we have a Patreon. Uh, you know, donate some money so we could you know keep keep the wheels greased. You know, the lights on. You know. Uh, um, it's uh, Patreon backslash Gold Blooded Podcast, right, Steve? Mm-hmm. And what else am I missing? Reviews. Yeah, fucking. Co- oh, should we read those now? No, save them. Okay, those reviews. That Ooh, one was cliffhanger. Yeah, great review. Next episode. <laughs> All right, Foco. You to go.